Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another exciting episode Yeah, here on Sam's Creative Toolbox. Today's topic is all about creating a chalkboard animation in After Effects. So this topic is quite huge, so I decided to split up this tutorial into two parts. In today's part, part one, I will show you some basic techniques, uh, how to create some shapes, how to animate them. And then in part two, I will show you some more advanced stuff, some more advanced techniques for creating even more, um, let's say, complicated shapes. I will show you how to animate in videos and also use any logo you want and create an element from it. So yeah, instead of wasting more time, let's meet in After Effects and have some fun. Yeah, like always, we start by creating a new composition. So I will first close this project, then go to composition, new composition. Um, as always, I will choose a name uh, construction comp, for example. Then the size 1920 by 1080, which is HDTV. And frame rate 25, because I live in Germany. If you live in America, for example, you had to choose 29.97, which is NTSC. And the duration uh, always depends on your uh, project. So if you don't know or if you aren't sure about the final length, just make it um, just make it super long, like I don't know, maybe um, two minutes or so, because it's always easier to shorten up your comp than to make it longer uh, after you've done everything. So yeah, for the moment, let's import first our texture right here. By the way, I will also put a donut link in the description so that you also can use uh, this custom made texture as well for your own projects. So as I said, just click and drag it into your our, our construction comp. And because this image is, as you can see, it's super big, you can then hit S for scale and just bring it down. Of course, if you want a bigger, um, bigger project, you can also use the size of this texture as well. Um, okay, so let's maybe rename that to background or I usually call it just BG. Okay, and now after we've done everything, it's now time to create our custom shapes. But before we can do that, we of course first have to uh, yeah, think about what kind of shapes we want. Do we want some arrows? Do we want some speech bubbles? If you're looking for inspiration, I would recommend to just look on Google and maybe type in um, chalk elements, chalkboard elements or something like that. You can also go to um, Photolia, Shutterstock or some other uh, stock photography sites. They also have very often some very cool, um, oh, some cool elements and then you can try to recreate them as well in After Effects. So, as I said, I will now show you the basics. There are basically two ways about how to create those custom shapes. And to be honest, both techniques are they're just kind of the same, to be honest, because both use the path uh, tool right here. So let's zoom in a bit. And let's say that we want to create a speech bubble, for example. Um, so just um, if you have a custom shape you want, you can just now click and easily draw your own speech bubble. Okay, so of course this isn't perfect right now. Um, you should always invest some more time creating your own um, elements, of course. And now let's rename that to speech bubble. Okay, sorry, without this hashtag right here. Okay, and now let's hit U two times to open up the layer settings. And the first thing I usually do is to uh, get rid of the fill right here and then increase the stroke width to something around, let's say, yeah, let's say 20 for this element right here. And yeah, that's basically everything you have to do. Of course, I will now show you how to fine tune your, this kind of shape. But for the moment, let's uh, say you also want to animate this um, speech bubble so that it looks like you actually would draw it on a paper. For that, let's select our layer again and go to this Add section and choose the modifier called Trim Path. You can also use uh, or trim multiple shapes, but I usually do it uh, one Trim Path for uh, one shape just to stay organized. Okay, and then you can see that you have a start value, which is set to zero by default, and the end value, which is set to 100. 
And if you now drag that 100 back to zero, you can see that our um, shape right here starts to disappear. So you can use that now to animate that in. So let's uh, go to the beginning of our animation, click the stopwatch right here, then go forward for let's say uh, about, um, yeah, about two seconds. Of course, it depends on how fast you want your drawing to be, but if you want it realistic, I would say that two seconds is a good value for the moment. And then just increase the end value back to 100. Okay, so now let's zoom in a bit closer right here. Okay, um, if you now say that, well, this uh, animation starts at the wrong point because I want that to start at this corner right here. You can then use the offset value to just move it around until you find your perfect spot. So maybe in this case, I think that this looks great. Okay, the next problem you may see is that we have very straight edges, which don't look like a drawing. They just looks very yeah, ugly in my opinion. So to fix that, just uh, click two times on your stroke to open up even more settings. And then you will find um, two sections. The first one is called line cap, the second one is called line join. So just set that from butt cap to round cap. And as you can see now the start and the end point is getting round. And now if you change the line join from meter join to round join as well, you can see that we now have some, some more round shapes than before. Okay, so now let's zoom out a bit again. Okay, so now we have our first animation done. If you want to give it even more a uh, drawn look, like on the chalkboard, you can now use an effect which I use very often in my animation. It's called Roughen Edges. So just go into your Effects and Presets panel and type in Roughen Edges and apply this effect to your uh, shape layer. And now let's zoom in again. So if you now take a look at the left at the effect control panel, you can see that there are a lot of values, but you don't need to actually change a lot. You just need to change the complexity up to, to 10. So as you can see, the noise right here gets even more detailed. So 10 is also the maximum value. So you can also, for example, choose one in comparison. So you can see that there isn't any noise, but I usually like uh, around 10 or eight and then you can play around with the border. So the higher the value, the more your line will disappear. So as you can see, this looks maybe a bit too extreme, like some noise clouds or something like that. So let's bring it back to, let's say something like, like 14 in this case. Okay. And yeah, as you can see, now we have some kind of uh, drawing effect for our element. Okay. Another cool way, for example, if you want to create a frame for a video like I did in the preview of this tutorial, is to create uh, just uh, the pen tool or your rectangle tool. Just, for example, a rectangular shape. Just something like that. By the way, I would also recommend to make your um, drawings not perfectly um, parallel or so, or symmetric. Because if you think about drawing, you don't, uh, if you draw it with your hand, you don't have perfectly symmetrical lines. So if there are some um, off balances or so, I think it looks even more um, drawn, a bit more comic style, which is what I personally like. So let's go or zoom in again and again hit U two times. Let's call that, for example, video frame. And as before, just delete the fill and increase the stroke to something around um, 14 or 15. Then again, change the line cap and the join cap to round. And this time, you also click on this plus icon for the dashes. I don't know if you have seen my HUD tutorial, but if you have seen it, you will be familiar with this effect. So what this dashes effect does, it, as you can see, it just splits up this line into various different parts. So if you now increase the value, you can see that you get bigger lines or smaller lines. And if you click uh, on this plus icon again, you can have uh, a gap between these uh, lines as well. So you can make the gap very big or very small. For the moment, I think that something like that looks looks good. 
let's make the dashes a bit smaller and decrease the size so yeah I think that looks good and of course you also have the offset for these uh, dashes as well and once again apply the roughen edges effect but to save some time I will just copy it from my speech bubble uh, layer and paste it on my video frame of course now it's a bit too much so like I said before just decrease the border to bring back some of these lines right here okay and of course if you want to animate it you can also use the trim path modifier again so let's zoom out again and as you can see we now have two cool um, yeah cool elements for our chalkboard but as you remember I said that there are two techniques um, which are basically the same so now I will show you how to create even more custom shapes and also this uh, fill because with those um, element layers right here you can't create uh, these filled lines because the effect we use isn't working with these things so what we need is now a solid so go to layer new and solid the color doesn't matter but let's just choose white okay and now again select your pen tool and now it's time to draw a mask on top of your white solid so before that please make sure that you have actually selected this layer okay and now let's draw I don't know maybe some kind of an arrow shape of course it isn't perfect you can also go back and fine-tune something um, oh god that does look so ugly right now but I think you get the point okay by the way if you want to um, draw more accurate you can also click on this little icon right here and activate the grid for example so then you have these yellow or sorry so those greenish lines right here which actually help a lot drawing some nice perfectly lines okay so this effect basically is the same because like before we also have a path but this time if you hit U two times we don't have any values or um, options like before we only have the mask so let's set the mask to none because we don't want to use the mask as a mask we just want to use the path of the mask so if you also want to create the stroke you only have to type in stroke in your effects and presets window and apply this generate stroke effect to your solid then go to paint style and change it from on original image to reveal original image and now you can see that we already have a thin outline and like before you can now increase the brush size for example or decrease it depending uh, what you want you can also play around with the brush hardness so make it super hard or make it very soft depending on your personal taste you can also play around with uh, the opacity with the spacing but this time you only get these little dots right here so let's bring it back to zero okay and as you can see we also have the start and the end value we already know from our uh, element layers so they actually work kind of the same so you also have the end value okay so to animate in or out your uh, element right here but the cool thing about these or this technique with the mask is that now you can also create this fill as I said before so let's bring the brush size a bit down let's also paste our roughen edges from before okay let's close that for the moment and now let's go to effects and presets window again and type in an effect which is called scribble so this effect is actually very very cool sorry <laughs> try it again nope so just click and drag it on top of your solid and as you can see we instantly get these nice lines but unfortunately let's bring let's close that again for the moment unfortunately we got rid of our outline but we don't want that so first uh, go to composite and set it to on original image okay and the next thing I usually do if you don't want uh, any movement is to set the wiggles per second to zero because as you can see these lines uh, by default are, yeah, are wiggling they are just moving around just like in a comic for example but if you don't like it just like I said set it back to zero 
And now let's go to the top of our scribble effect. And as you can see, we now have uh, some values like uh, single mask, non, all masks, or all masks using modes. I will explain uh, these two things in part two. So for the moment, as we only have one mask on the solid, we just have to select the single mask. Okay. Like I said before, if you would choose all masks, you can now choose uh, yeah, various masks right here. And also the fill type, for example, you can also choose centered edge, which basically also creates an outline. You can create, for example, inside edge, outside edge, and so on. But as I said, I want to use it as fill, so I will choose inside. And for example, I can now lower the opacity to, let's say, something around, um, let's say, 65 for this case. You can also play around with the stroke width. Okay. And if you now click on the stroke options, you can see that we also have many, many more options like the curviness, the spacing between the lines. You can make the very big or very small depending on, yeah, on like always what you want. Uh, also the spacing variation to make it even more random. For example, like, uh, yeah, looks like a child had drawn it. I don't know. Okay. And like always, we have our start and our end value. So. Just to animate this uh, thing right here. Sorry, let's make our video frame and the speech bubble invisible. And select our solid. By the way, just call it arrow. Then let's say we want first our um, stroke to animate in. So let's go to the beginning, click on the end stopwatch, bring it back to zero. Then again, go forward for about two seconds and bring it back to 100. Okay. And now let's say after we've the, uh, we've drawn our outline, we usually would fill our arrow. So let's activate our scribble again, go to two seconds, click on this end stopwatch, bring it back to zero. And now again, move forward for about, let's say one second in this case. And now let's bring it back to 100. And now let's hit zero on your keyboard to make a short RAM review. So this may take a couple of seconds because the scribble effect really eats up your uh, computer uh, power. But yeah, as you can see, we now have this cool looking animation. Okay. But if you now zoom in again, we have still one problem and that is that there is no rough and edges effect for our scribble lines. If you now think that you can just click and drag this um, at the end of your um, effect task right here, you can see that this effect is way too strong for our super small scribble lines. So what I then usually do is just apply this effect roughen edges again. Sorry, roughen edges. Just click and drag it again below your scribble. Then um, again, set the complexity up to 10, but bring the border all the way down, for example, to one. And if this is also too strong, let's try, for example, 0.5. And also bring down the scale, for example, to 20 or to 10, depending on how big you want that. But I think that, um, yeah, maybe something like, like 50 looked good. Maybe the border even smaller to 0.25. Okay, so here's the before and after. Okay, so like I said, that's our animation. Let's also bring back our two element layers right here and make it fit. Okay, so here's uh, our result of today's tutorial. Of course, you could now ask me the question, uh, why choose not always this uh, technique? Because you can always have the chance of creating a fill instead of only having this outline. And that's really true. I usually use uh, the solid technique a bit more than only this outline technique. But don't forget that if you use the element layer, you have all of these path modifiers like repeater, trim path, wiggle path, so you still have a lot of cool options right here and also you have the chance of creating those uh, those dashes. So I would recommend that it's the best answer you can always give to your students. 
it depends. It really depends on the result you want. So for example, if you, like I said, just want to create a speech bubble, I think it's enough to just have this outline right here. But if you want to create a, an arrow, which looks a bit more complex, I would recommend to use the solid technique with the mask layer. Um, but yeah, all in all, like I said, it's just trial and error to find the technique you like the most. But I think that's all you need for the basics. So just remember, always use the, the pen tool to either create a mask on a solid or create an element layer itself. And then just use roughen edges to create this rough outline and also uh, this triple effect if you want some fill. Okay guys, that's it for part one. I hope you liked the basic video. Like I said, next time it will be a bit more advanced. And yeah, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel here, and also please check out my other social media sites like Instagram or Facebook. And yeah, like always, stay creative and have fun.